Hi friends, so I had an idea earlier this week that I'm really excited to sit down and finally be filming. I wanted to do what in my mind is a no buy tutorial, which means it's not gonna be about the products that are in this as much as it is about the technique, getting ready together and like learning together. I'm somebody who really, really enjoys scrolling through Pinterest or Instagram. And when I get inspired by a makeup look, nine times out of 10, I have no idea what makeup products they're wearing on their face. So I wanted to take that same idea and kind of get inspired by a photo that I found on Pinterest. And I really feel like this makeup look can be created with the products that you already have. Hence the no buy tutorial. It's not about making sure you have something specific because I really feel like most everybody will have everything to create this look. So I'm gonna show you guys the look that I'm talking about. It's a very, very fresh kind of glam. The eye look is a little bit smokier, but I think it's gonna be very easy to achieve with whatever products that you have. So we're gonna follow this. I, I tried to match my shirt to a similar color of shirt that she's wearing. I tried to do my hair similar just so you get the full vibe. Um, but we're gonna go through step by step and recreate this look just using what we already have. So if you wanna pause this and check the description box, I've listed out the things that you need. So if you wanna get ready with me, go ahead and pause it, check the description and pull all of your products and we'll kind of walk through everything together. If not, then just keep watching. So we're gonna start off with the first step, which is gonna to be to prep the skin. I wanted to use a lightweight moisturizer because it seems like, I'll pop up the picture again. I'm gonna be doing this throughout the entire tutorial so we can really have a good reference. Her skin doesn't look super dewy. It also doesn't look super matte. So I wanted to have the skin prep be something in between. We definitely wanna moisturize, but it doesn't have to be too heavy. So you're gonna want a lightweight moisturizer, something that's gonna really hydrate the skin, whatever your favorite is, but nothing that's gonna leave a heavy residue. So this is what I chose for myself, the Skin Fix Triple Lipid Peptide Lotion. It's such a good like everyday moisturizer. It's a basic moisturizer. So I thought this would be perfect for what I'm going for. So I'm just gonna go ahead and prep the skin with this. You can kind of give yourself a little facial massage as well. This will kind of de-puff the face if you give yourself a little facial massage. And also I find that it kind of brings blood to the skin and warms up the face, which I don't know why, but I swear to you it helps your makeup kind of like melt into the skin even better. I'm just gonna take this around the eyes, whatever's left. I'm not using like an eye cream or anything. We're gonna keep it really simple. Next, we're gonna prep the lips. She has really juicy, balmy lips, as you can see right here. So I wanna make sure that we prep the lips first so that when we finish the tutorial, they'll be already nice and dewy and plump and hydrated. So I chose my Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. This is actually uh, the mango flavor, which I haven't tried yet. It's been sitting on my desk waiting for me to try it. And I haven't yet, so I wanted to give this a go. So I'm just gonna put that all over. That way this has time to really sink into the lips. We're gonna make sure that our moisturizer has had a minute before we go into foundation itself. So for foundation, if you look at this picture again, you can see her skin through it, but it gives a pretty good coverage. Now in this case, if you're just following along, and you know, for me personally, if I look at this, I'm not trying to necessarily copy the foundation exactly. This is where you can use your favorite foundation. So just grab whatever is best for you, I would say that according to the photo for following along based off of that look, um, it doesn't look like it's too dewy or too matte. It's somewhere in the middle. So if you have a favorite foundation that has more of a natural finish, something right in the middle, but honestly, whatever works for you is great. Just pick a favorite foundation. I'm gonna be using my current favorite, which is the NARS Light Reflecting. I also have been loving the Hourglass Ambient one, but I felt like that was a little too heavy duty for this style of makeup look, or at least based off the reference photo. So the moisturizer has had time to sink in, but there's not really much residue left on the skin. If you find that you've applied too much moisturizer, you can always take a tissue and just kind of like gently pat off. I'll show you how I would do this. You can take a tissue and just kind of gently pat off the extra if you're worried about, you know, applying too much. So now we're gonna go into foundation. This is where I like to start over the areas that I want the most coverage. So for me, that's on the cheeks. I find that I have a little more redness there. So I'm just gonna take this with a foundation brush. You could apply this with your fingers. You could apply it with a sponge. You guys know I like to use a brush and then a sponge. So that's what I'm gonna do today. And I'm gonna kind of just check in and see. I think I want a little more coverage because her skin does look very even. It doesn't look heavy. Like whatever foundation she's wearing is not heavy, um, but it definitely gives more coverage than 
what I had. So I'm just gonna build up a little bit more. That's the nice thing about this foundation. Like it works really well for me and I've, I feel like I can build up the coverage, which is really great. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my sponge now and pick up what's left on the back of my hand and then press that into the skin. Okay, that's where I want it. We're gonna move on to concealer. I'm gonna pop up the picture again. You can see she definitely has bright under eyes, but they're not super bright. So I wanted to make sure to choose a shade of concealer. Whatever formula you love will work. Just make sure it's not like too much lighter than your skin. So I would suggest something that's pretty close to your skin tone, but again, you can see she has that brightness there. So I'm gonna use my favorite NYX Bear With Me Concealer. This is a shade that really works well for this type of a look. I use the shade Light, which honestly matches my skin tone pretty well. It still gives a nice coverage though and brightens up the under eye area. So you can see like with this color, again, it's not about the formula as much as the shade here. So just make sure it's just a step up from the shade that you use with your foundation, but nothing super bright. We want it to look really natural and that's really key is the, the shade you choose in your concealer. But she has a nice bright under eye, so I'm not being shy here. I'm really making sure that I get pretty decent coverage. I'm also taking this around the eyelid because I have discoloration here. So I like to take what's left on my sponge and just kind of pat it around the eyes. I'm also gonna use this same color. Technically, I probably should use something slightly deeper, but whatever. <laughs> I'm being a little bit lazy and I'm just gonna take what's left and go over blemishes for that extra bit of coverage. Next, we're gonna set the face. So this is where your loose setting powder comes in. Any formula works. Um, I would choose something that's gonna really set the face but not be too heavy. Something that leaves a nice soft matte finish. Nothing um, super dewy or anything like that. Just for this look, we're gonna add in some of that radiance with a highlighter later. So out of my personal collection, I felt like the number seven powder would be good for this. So the Translucent Perfect Light Loose Setting Powder. I'm gonna go ahead and take this and I'm gonna start underneath the eyes. I'm gonna make sure to press out the concealer before going in with powder just to make sure that I'm not setting any creases. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press the powder into the skin with a brush. Um, I'm gonna be using mostly the Morphe Ariel brush set in case you guys have it, but just use anything that you use typically for your under eye area with powder. And if you don't have something specific, you can use like a large eyeshadow brush as long as it's clean, it'll do the exact same thing. I'm also setting the concealer on the eyelid, going all the way around the eyes, pressing this into the T-zone for me personally, that's where I get oily throughout the day, so I really wanna make sure this is locked in place. I'm also gonna take that through the brows to set that before we fill in the brows later. I'm gonna take a little bit of a larger brush. This is the Morphe A32. And I am gonna set the sides of the face. This is because we're gonna use powder, bronzer, blush, and highlight. And I just feel like it glides a lot better when it has at least a light layer of powder on the outsides of the face where we will apply um, those other products. Okay, we're looking a little wild here, but that's okay, trust the process. All right, so now we're gonna pull up the picture again. She definitely has a nice warmth to her skin. So you're gonna wanna choose a bronzer that's gonna be really easy to blend. Um, something that has a nice blend of warmth and structure. So for me, something that's a neutral undertone is always really great. You obviously have to keep in mind your own personal skin tone here. So just choose your favorite matte bronzer, whatever that is, grab that. For me, I'm gonna be using the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer, a classic. And I'm gonna be taking this, by the way, this is the shade bronzer. <laughs> I'm gonna be taking this and starting to warm up and sculpt the face. I think that this formula is really foolproof. And also, this tone and undertone is gonna add quite a bit of warmth to my skin without me overdoing it. Let me pull up the picture one more time. Okay, so we've got bronzer going on for sure on the forehead. So we're gonna kind of focus it a little heavier on the forehead going into the hairline like she has it. And I'm gonna put the picture up again. I know I'm gonna be doing this a lot, but you can kind of see it's like there's warmth going down to the top of her brow. So I'm gonna kind of pull that down and go into my brow. This is why I didn't do my brows yet because I feel like sometimes when I bronze the skin, I like to bring it into the brow a little bit. It just looks more cohesive that way. So I'm kind of copying the shape of her bronzer she definitely has bronzer going on underneath the cheeks, so we're gonna add that there as well, blending it up into the hairline, up toward the ear. And her bronzer kind of stops right about here, so that's where I'm gonna stop as well. 
You guys know I always like to go along the jawline and down the neck and I can't like guarantee that this is what she's got going on, but it looks like she's got a nice bronze neck and chest. So for me, since I do have more fair skin than her, I'm definitely gonna bring this down to kind of make everything look extra cohesive. Okay, so now I'm actually gonna take a fluffy eyeshadow brush. This is the Morphe in Ariel A11. If we look at the photo again, you can see that she's got a nice contour shape up right here toward the brow, and it goes down the sides of her nose, around the bottom, and then back up. So we are gonna use a matte brown eyeshadow soon, but we're gonna incorporate the bronzer shade into this look as well. So I'm gonna take that same bronzer, and we're gonna start by just kind of going right into this area right here on both sides of the nose, up into the brows. I know I haven't filled in the brows yet, but I'm just trying to kind of sculpt out that shape a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna take that down the sides of the nose. She definitely has the same color, whatever that is, going down the sides of her nose as kind of like a contour. And then it looks like it wraps around the bottom a little bit, something like that. I'm also gonna kind of bring it into the crease of my eye. We're gonna be adding eyeshadow, like I said, but we can start creating the structure with the bronzer while we have it out, why not? Okay, I personally love to just go in and blend my bronzer with whatever's left on the powder brush. So this is another reason why setting the face before you do bronzer with just even a light layer of um, translucent powder, it really comes in handy for situations like this because when you go in to blend everything out, nothing's stuck to the face because you know, you set it lightly with a powder so it's easier to blend out. Okay, so I think things are looking pretty good. I'm gonna put a little bit more bronzer on the sides of the face. This is where you gotta assess your own situation, okay? But I think overall, we're off to a really, really good start here. Okay, we're gonna go into, I'm trying to think of what order to do this. We haven't done brows yet, and I think we'll continue with face. So you can see, she's got a little bit of a glow going on, but it's not super emollient looking or super dewy. So for me, I felt like a soft powder highlighter would be perfect for this. So this is where you're gonna wanna pick up out of your collection a really natural powder highlighter if you have it. Now, if you don't have a powder highlighter, you can use a cream, but I just really feel like a powder highlight is going to give us something close to what she has going on here. So when I was thinking about a powder highlight that was kinda of soft, I immediately thought of my Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Baked Powder in the shade 01 Highlight. So I'm gonna take this and I'm looking at the photo. She definitely has highlighter right here on the high points of the face. So we're gonna go there. She definitely has something glowing up at the top of her brow. So we're gonna go there. Same thing on this side before I forget. Cheekbone, top of the brow, kind of at an angle. And she's got highlighter down the center of the nose, but it's not super precise. So I'm just taking what's left on the brush and just going down the center of the nose. Let's see. That's all I can really tell right now. So that's where I'm gonna stop with this. We're actually gonna do blush later so that we can see how much to apply. So now we're gonna move on to brows. It seems like she's got really soft brows. So this is where you can use a pencil, you can use a powder. I'm gonna kinda use both a pencil and a powder. I feel more comfortable um, creating the shape of my personal brows with a pencil first. And then I'm gonna fill in a little bit more with a powder. That's just what her brows look like. Like it just looks like it's not a super precise pencil. She's got soft filled in brows. So we're gonna recreate that. I obviously do not have the same brow shape as her. So that's why I'm gonna go in and fill in with pencil first, just to make sure my brows look natural on me. I'm not trying to copy her brow shape. I'm just trying to copy the, the feel of it, I guess, <laughs> like the finish of it. I hope you guys are enjoying this style of video so far. I know it's kind of different because I do tutorials all the time, but this one kind of is more of a class mindset. I don't know, using things that you already have, which I think is fun. I hope you guys are having fun. For the powder portion, I was looking for an eyebrow powder, couldn't find it. So I'm just gonna use an eyeshadow. I'm actually gonna take my Makeup by Mario eyeshadow palette. This is the Master Mads palette. And you're gonna want an angled brush. So I grabbed one of those. And I think this color right here matches my hair color pretty well, so we'll try it. I really was hoping to find my brow powder, but I couldn't. So next best thing is just an eyeshadow that matches. So I'm gonna take that angled brush and just kind of fill in the gaps a little bit with a powder to try to mimic her soft 
but definitely defined brows. Okay, I'm gonna make sure to take a spoolie and just brush through the brows gently so that there's no harsh lines. And everything looks nice and blurred, but super filled in. Okay, I think that worked pretty well. All right, we're gonna move on to eyes. So I'm gonna put the picture up here again. Most of her eye look is matte. So this is where you wanna grab matte brown eyeshadows. That's why I picked this palette for myself. You can dip into several palettes if you need to. Just kind of gather your matte brown eyeshadows, which I feel like most people have. There's usually a matte brown in most palettes. So looking at her eyes, we're gonna start off with something like mid-toned. Well, actually we're gonna do, she's got like a mustardy brown, so like a warmer toned brown. I'm gonna take this shade right here. So pick like a light brown with a warm, leaning yellow undertone. It's not perfectly yellow, don't worry about it, but I'm just gonna take this, which one did I say I was gonna use? This one, yeah. I'm gonna take this shade, and we're just gonna start to kind of build a transition shade. This is also where bronzer could be used again if you don't have something quite this color, your bronzer will work. Um, but I'm just gonna go in with a fluffy brush. This is the A11 as well. I have a couple of these lying around, so it's a clean one. And I'm just gonna throw that into the crease and a little bit above as my transition shade. We're gonna go into a more mid-toned brown. And so I'm gonna go into the shade right underneath that. And I'm actually gonna take the same exact brush and we're gonna go a little bit lower on the eye, kind of nestling the brush into the crease. And then I'm gonna go back and forth, working slowly till we create a little bit of definition. Now it does look like she brings out the shadow a little bit. It's not super far out kind of stops at the end of her brow. So I'm trying to copy that, but also you wanna make sure that it suits your face shape. So just apply this color where you normally apply your crease color and bring it out where you normally bring your eyeshadow out. Now that I've got this color in the crease, I'm gonna take a bit more of that same exact shade and I'm gonna lightly drag this down to the eyelid. I want most of the color in the crease but it seems like she's got the same color all over the eye, but just not as packed on. So I'm just diffusing it down on the eyelid to create almost a gradient. So once there's a little left on the brush, I'm just gonna kind of swirl that onto the eyelid a little bit. We're gonna go back into the other brush that we used for bronzer, and I'm just gonna make sure that this is super blended. I didn't wanna take a really deep shade for this part. So I'm just using the brush again that we used for bronzer to contour the nose. Pick up that same brush or a clean brush if you use that brush for eyeshadow. I just kind of blend that out. Okay, she definitely has the same color going on on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna start by taking that deeper shade. So the more mid-toned brown. And I'm gonna tap off the excess and then go into this shade on the lower lash line. Focusing the pigment right up against the lashes and then once there's less on the brush, you can kind of just pull it down under the eyes. And this is where you can also connect it to the outer corner, so it looks like it's all one cohesive shape, like that. So we're gonna do the same thing to this eye. Less is more, by the way. So really make sure you tap off the excess before going in. You can always add more shadow if you want it. It's a lot harder to remove. All right, we're gonna take another brush. This is A20 from the same Morphe collection. We're gonna go into that kind of lighter toned, warm, mustardy brown. And I'm gonna take this and just mix it into right underneath where we just applied that first shade. I'm just trying to mimic the same colors on the top lid as I have on the lower lash line. So use whatever color you used, starting out here, even if it's bronzer. You just want it to be a little lighter than that other color and then just blend that out and up. And that's pretty much all she has going on as far as eyeshadow goes. She does seem to have a little bit of an inner corner highlight, so we're gonna pick up whatever highlighter you used on the face. So for me, it's the Laura Mercier one, and I'm gonna pop this in the inner corner of the eye, right here, and then she also has a little bit of a highlight moving into the lower lash line, so we're gonna go right here as well. I don't really see a major brow bone highlight, so we're gonna skip that today. And just go in like that. We're gonna kind of bounce around again. We're gonna take the same angled brush that we used in the brow, actually, and I'm gonna dip into the same powder that we used in the brow. And we're gonna take this, tap off the excess, and just go right up against the lash line. She's got some definition on the outer third with like a dark brown, 
but it's soft. So just use a dark brown eyeshadow to kind of sculpt that out. And then we will also do a little bit of definition on the top lash line as well. So I'm only going on the outer third like that. On the top lash line, it honestly looks like she's wearing some sort of a liquid liner. It's a black liner, or maybe it's a strip lash. I don't know, it could be both, honestly. Regardless, it's a really thin line up against the lash line. So grab a black eyeliner. I'm gonna use a pencil, that's just what I'm comfortable with, but you can use your favorite liquid liner. And we're gonna go, let's see, we're gonna start like two thirds of the way in. She doesn't have her eyes lined all the way to the inner corner. So I'm gonna start kind of where my eyeball starts. <laughs> What's that called? The iris of the eye, is that what it's called? Kind of like right there. And then we're gonna drag out this pencil. Again, keeping it really, really close to the actual lash line itself. There's not like a wing or anything. It just goes and stops at the outer corner of her eye. So we're just literally following the shape of our eye with this eyeliner. Okay. It also looks like she's got maybe something slightly shimmery or brightening in the waterline. So I'm gonna flip over my pencil, this is optional, honestly, and I'm gonna just apply this shimmery eyeliner in the very center of the waterline on the lower lash line. You can totally skip this step if you don't have like a light shimmery eyeliner or even a more nude eyeliner. You can skip it if you don't have it. If you do, you can follow along if you want, but it's not like a deal breaker for the look, okay. So now we're gonna apply mascara. Choose your favorite volumizing mascara. Um, I picked out the Rare Beauty mascara, so we're definitely gonna go on the top lashes and the bottom lashes for this look. And it does look like she's wearing falsies, so that's where you can kind of pick and choose what you want. I figured, you know, most people have mascara, not everyone wears or has false lashes, but this is where you can customize it to work for whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna start by just applying this to the top lashes. She's got like a really nice volume, but it's not super intense. So I'm building up my mascara to where I like it, but I still want it to look somewhat natural. Same thing on this eye, okay? Then we're gonna use what's left on the applicator brush and just gently kind of tap and pull down on the lower lashes so that it doesn't get too overdone, but she definitely has definition on those lower lashes as well. So this is where I'm just gonna assess the situation really quickly. I'm gonna go in with my powder brush and kind of remove any fallout if there is any. I'm just gonna kind of blend over everything one more time on the bronzer and the highlight. And we're actually going to, let's see, let's do, let's do blush next. So I'm gonna take a warm pink matte blush. The one that I found that I felt would be perfect for this look, and you can see, I'll pop her picture up right here, it, it looks similar to me, but any warmer pink blush will work. Preferably matte, it doesn't look like she's got shimmer in the blush specifically, but if you don't have a matte pink blush, that's fine if it has a little bit of shimmer. Um, this is Laura Mercier Strawberry. I'm gonna pick that up on an A22 brush from the same Morphe and Ariel collection. Her blush placement is really interesting. I'll pop this up right here again. It's not too high on the cheeks. It's like right here. So that's where I'm gonna copy. Obviously, again, you wanna make sure it suits your face shape. So you can kind of smile and apply it on the lower portion of the apples of the cheeks. And she doesn't have too much either. It's mostly right here. It kind of blends up and out, but it's mostly just like a little circle almost, it seems like anyway. So I'm just gonna keep building that up. I like a little more blush than most people. Um, you can put on as much as you want. I'm also gonna take a little bit and go on the sides of the nose. It just looks like, you know, a little healthier that way, a little bit on the forehead, maybe the chin. This is just my personal preference with blush. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Now, we're gonna look at the lips. This is where I'm actually gonna wipe off any foundation on the lips. This is why I like to apply the lip balm first as well, because by now, the lip balm has had a little time to sink into the lips, so I can really kind of buff off any dryness that I had going on, which is nice. Her lip color isn't anything crazy. It just looks like her natural lip color with like a warm brownish nude lip liner on the outer corners. So that's what we're gonna try to mimic. In my collection personally, I found that the matte lip liner from NYX or the suede matte lip liner in the shade London looked pretty similar, but choose whatever you like. Some sort of a warmer toned brown. And we're just gonna line the lips really softly 
just around the edges because it really doesn't look like she's filled in the lips at all with lip liner either. So we're just focused on the very edge. I personally like to blend in my lip liner with my finger just so that there's like a little bit of a gradient from the lip line to your actual natural lip color. Okay, something like that. After that, we're gonna go back to the lip balm that we used um, earlier to prep. So for me, it's this mango one. Whatever you use to hydrate the lips, we're gonna apply a little more, starting at the center of the lips and working outward, just blending that into the lip liner. So it's gonna kind of make like a gloss situation, but I'll pop up the picture here. You can kind of see it just simply looks like balm with a bit of lip liner on the outside. I think that looks pretty accurate for myself. Might not be the exact color. And you know, keep in mind, we do have different skin tones, but still pretty accurate. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to assess the situation. We're basically done at this point. So this is where you're gonna to wanna to step back and assess your own situation. <laughs> Just look into a further mirror and kind of get a feel for where everything's at. Um, you can add more bronzer like me, you can add more blush, you can take your powder brush and just blend things out a little bit more, whatever you want. Honestly, I feel like that's where I want things. So of course, since we put in all the effort, we wanna make sure to lock in the makeup. So we're gonna use a long lasting setting spray. I grabbed my Milani Make It Last, if it will focus, here it is. Milani Make It Last setting spray. So I'm just gonna make sure to spritz this all over. We're gonna let that sink in. Once it's halfway dry, you guys know, I like to take my sponge and just press everything down. This really helps it look more fresh. Just like that photo, she has like a freshness to her face, but it's not super dewy. It looks very much like this, honestly. After that, I always love to have my brows set. So I'm gonna take a clear brow gel. This one is from Milani, and I'm just gonna lightly set the brows. We don't need to like make them super feathery or anything like that. Her brows are definitely a very natural shape, so just a small amount of clear brow gel will do the job. If you don't have a clear brow gel, you can actually spray a spoolie like this with a little bit of hairspray and just kind of comb your brows into place. That works well too. All right, we're gonna take the hair down and there you have it. I'll put the picture right here so you can see the comparison. It's just something that's inspired by this look. Again, I have no idea what exact products she's wearing here, but you can see how it's really fun to kind of take inspiration from photos you see or Pinterest or whatever, and just use what you have. You don't have to go out and buy things to be able to recreate a look and get a similar feeling to whatever it is you're inspired by. So I hope you guys enjoyed this style of tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you follow along, I would love to see your looks. So tag me over on Instagram or wherever you post it because I would love, love, love to see your version and your recreation since we kind of got ready together today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this no buy tutorial. Let me know if you like this vibe. If it's something that you enjoy, of course, I would love to do more episodes. So tell me if you liked it. I thought it was fun. I think it's always fun to like remind ourselves that we don't need specific products to get, you know, the exact same look. We can all use something completely different, tailor it to ourselves and create inspiring looks using what we already have. If you have not yet joined the family, I would love for you to do so. You can hit the subscribe button down below and to be notified on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays when I post videos, just click on the bell after you subscribe and you'll get a notification so you don't miss any video from me. That's it for me today. I hope you guys had fun watching. I can't wait to see your looks if you followed along and I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are and I will see you in my next video. Love you. Bye.